No Jumper, coolest podcast in the world. And today I have a man who is uh, fresh up out of the, the county, right? Not not prison? Uh, I went to prison uh, for like my last four months because I had to plead guilty. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, so fresh up out, prison, slash the county. Mm -hmm. Jabba Log is back. Back in action. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. You must feel good. Yeah. How long have you gone? Three years? Yeah, like three years and four months. Explain uh, what the situation was that that led to you being locked up. Oh, I was uh, I was out. I had court a case in California, but then I was out on bond, and then I had moved to Vegas. I had a condo out there, and then uh, I got in a little altercation. They say like we try to rob Floyd Mayweather. What? Yeah. You, I, I don't know what he's talking about. You claim this isn't true, but this is how'd they get the idea that this is what happened? Uh. They said a license plate of a car connected to me, but they said it was my girlfriend, but I don't got no girlfriends. Damn, so even Floyd Mayweather <laughs> can get flocked? Yeah, they said we try to take his jury. Well, that's what, you know, he, he didn't, he didn't, I'm never going to lie to nobody. He didn't write no statement. It was his security with him who called the police, but, you know, he, I don't know, man. I got the shit, though. Wow. So how'd they end up making the case against you? Cause they, it was a robbery that took place at the Red Rock Casino in Nevada, like an hour before he was finna get robbed. I mean, an hour after. It was a robbery, and then after that, I guess they say allegedly four people followed him home and tried to rob him and all the shits. That's what they accused you of? Yeah. But how did they actually tie you to the case? Because I, I was walking through the Red Rock Casino. You know, I was found guilty on it, so I was walking through the Red Rock Casino uh -huh. earlier that day, but, you know, they charged us with that. I pleaded out to that, to okay. that robbery. You pleaded out to it? Yeah. And agreed to do three years, or, or were you supposed to be no, there longer? No, I was... Uh, it's weird in Vegas. They don't do it like California. Like It's like two to f 10 years, five to 15, you know, like how O3 got, he got like a deal like right. from here to this long. Uh -huh. So they was trying to make me plead out to six to 15 years on my first deal, you know, but they offered my co-defendants. One got probation in two months and the other one had three to 15. I'm like, well, I got to do six to 15. So they took their deals and I stayed in the county, but I was going to go to trial because the witnesses said that it wasn't me, but COVID-19 happened. They stopped trial. So I'm just sitting in the county and then, you know, I, I ran through four lawyers. So my fourth lawyer, I'm like, man, we went bankrupt in here, man. We paying all these lawyers, you feel me? So Holy shit, because you said you spent over 150000 right? Yeah. Josh, can you throw me my phone? 150000 on different, total. Not on one lawyer at one time, but, like, I literally had four lawyers. Robert Draskovich, I had uh, Michael Becker, and a couple more, man. But they – Michael Becker, the good one, though. That was the last yeah, one you that you Google had? Them. Yeah. Well, how did the other ones fuck you over? Like, one one first started off like, oh, I want 30000 So, you know, we gave him 10000 down, and uh -huh. then uh, we was giving him 2500 a month. But he like, oh, I'm going to get you out in six months. So we're like, we'll pay you all the money. Just get me out. You feel me? Right. He never got me out. You feel me? And I couldn't get a bail because I told you I was out on bail in California, so I had a fugitive hold. Right. So they like, you can't bail out in another state with another charge. You got to finish one to get to the next one. Uh-huh. Because I would have bailed out. Right. But uh, when I first got arrested on the case, though, I bonded out. My warrants didn't pop up. I got booked. They raided my house, my condo in Summerlin. Then I, I bailed out because my warrants wouldn't pop up. But, like, I was out for three weeks, and they called me to the bells. I'm like, oh, sign some papers. I'm like, all right. I pull up to sign the papers. They sh shut the door, like, buzzed their door. Like, bling. They start pulling out guns. People was look like they was reading books, sitting down, just acting normal. And then they booked me. They did and then a they sting put the operation. Hold on. Yeah. Where, where at exactly? This was in Nevada. Okay, but wh I, where were you that they set this uh, all up? Uh, I think it's called, like, Bad Girls Bells Moms in Nevada. Oh, so you pulled up and they had all these I was these just people. pulling up to be cool. I wasn't trying to run. I'm like, already bailed out. I told him that I had a case in California. So I was in California with my uh, daughter and her mom and my brother. Okay. And then my mom called me like, all right, look, we're going to go fix that warrant. But they just want to see you back in Vegas where I bailed out at just to check in. So I'm like, all right, cool. I'm not trying to run. I'm going to fix my warrants. Right. But when I get there, they shut me up. Damn. Just booked me. And so, okay. What, what was your prison experience like in Vegas? 
jail slash prison. However, I, I thought it was like a, a gambling city, but when I, I, cause when I first got there, you feel me? Who I was, you know, I was signed to Snoop before I went to jail. So, right, you know, uh, when I got there, I was sitting. I had got booked, so I'm like, cool. I'm in there. Everybody know who I am, and uh, you know, people. We all getting booked. We still got our regular clothes on. Then I seen the police come up to me, like, stand up, put your hands behind your back. I'm like, put my hands behind my back. Why you ain't telling nobody else? I'm already in jail. Uh-huh. They handcuffed me and put me alone. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? And then I guess they put me in maximum custody because who I was. And then. It, that shit was crazy. So were you never really allowed to be around yeah. the general population? I mean, for two years, my family and stuff was calling up there trying to get me out, but they kept using excuses like, oh, you, who you is, you, all, everybody in the jail going to want to listen to you and try to get this Snoop Dogg and all this shit, like, on some weird shit, you feel me? I'm like, I don't beef with nobody in Vegas. I don't have no enemies out here. Like, right. let me go to general population. But for two years, they didn't. So I was on 23-hour lockdown. They was, like, coming out an hour a day. Right. That shit was crazy. Crazy hell, feeding me through the door and all that, handcuffing me to the shower, all type of bullshit. Damn, so you're just totally isolated for almost the whole time. Mm-hmm. But my mom ended up doing a protest because I couldn't do it no more. It's like it'll be my kids or my son's birthday, and it's 23 hour lockdown, so it's 24 sales. They still got to do a break. They got to do you know switch off breaks. They got to stop and go to lunch. So seven people a day don't come out. So I'll be in the room for 48, 72 hours without even touching the phone. I'm like, y'all got me for it. So sometimes I go out and refuse housing now. Only thing I'll do is handcuff you and just strangle you back to the room. You ain't going nowhere. It's, it is the hole. You is in the hole. Wow. In the hole out there, you're on 23-hour lockdown. You come out an hour a day, use the phone. So I just had commissary, basically. I was in the hole. It's hard to believe that that shit's legal, that they could just treat you like that, man. Man. Like, to, it, I should have been uh, The reason why they moved me Because uh, I swear I ain't lying uh, My mama had went live on my Instagram I'm Like oh they doing my son like this And, oh, and then okay. she went up to the courthouse Where my hoe was at Like can you please take his warrant off So we can bail him out And she did a protest I swear she did a protest Probably at 11 in the morning Like 12.30 I just get uh, The CEO come like Hey man get dressed I'm in my room Laying down He like get dressed I'm like for what He like classification Want to see you I'm like for what? I've been trying to. I've been writing them on the kiosks for years. They don't want to see me. Right. So I'm like low key surprised. I get dressed and I get the classification. I got a big old afro. I'm looking fucked up. And then they like, ah, uh, man, tell your mom take that off Instagram. I'm like, what off Instagram? She's talking about we're kidnapping you or you getting fed through doors and all that. I'm like, I am. He was like, well. If you take that down, we make a deal. I'll let you go to general population. I'm like, it took all this to do this? You feel me? I had to wow. refuse housing and all this. And I swear I was in general population probably at 130. That's insane. The, you could put, like, social media pressure on them and that they would just fold like that. I didn't even think they was watching my Instagram. They said, we this, this, the, this the play. Don't don't uh freestyle over the phone in here. I'm like, how? And I'm just rapping. they like, if you freestyle, we're going to bring you back. If you get into any trouble in this unit within your first 60 days, we're going to bring you back. If the uh, officers say you got the whole module surrounding you at your door. They said you're not allowed to freestyle. Over the phone, or I was going back. Oh, my God. What, they, why, they, they wanted to make sure you didn't put records out and make money? That's, yeah, that's why I released a free job tape over the phone from prison because I left the county. But if I would have did it from the county, yeah, it was finito. What was the uh, general population like once you finally got in there? Man, uh... It's not, yeah. is it gang related? For the yeah, most? it's gang related it out is. there. All of them down there for a lot of serious charges, you wouldn't think so, but it was a lot of California people there, like, yeah. you know, LA neighborhoods. Vegas is just a everybody. big old lick. Down just, the yeah, street. everybody just go there because it's cheap. So <laughs> yeah. when I got there, I'm like, man, it is what it is. You feel me? I got there, everybody start like, you know, doing what the police did say, like dick riding and shit. Like, man, what is y'all on, bro? Right. Anybody yeah. is doing anything. They they just thirsty as fuck trying yeah. to figure out what they Shut can do. For low, bro. Anybody try to get tough with you though? Man, uh nah. I didn't got into a little trouble in there, but it wasn't nobody really trying to be tough because you know I'm 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 a trip first, you feel me? But <laughs> it, it was cool. I liked it way better. I'm like, man, I wish I was here this whole time, but twenty three hour lockdown helped me. I was looking right here at your books. Really? The Robert Greeny? Yeah, you want to borrow, borrow one? Oh, man, for real, I read 48 Laws of Power in there. That's a great one. Uh, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Oh, really? Okay, yeah, so I was being alone, lot. you got a lot reading. Yeah, then. a lot. Malcolm X books, uh, Damon Dash, Jay Prince, Gucci Man autobiography, no, I read invest that one, yeah. in stock books. You know, it helped me. That's dope. Yeah. That's, I mean, making the best of a bad situation, I guess, right? For sure.
Wow, but so then when you're in general population, like what do you spend more of your time doing? Like watching TV, just talking with people, playing games, anything that, that I mean, shit? I was writing a lot of music where I was at, so when I got there, it was a lot going on because like you in a room all day where I'm at. So basically, I know my whole program. I'm finna sit here and write music. I'm gonna read a little bit. I'm gonna go to sleep and I'm gonna stand at the door talking, to touch this phone. You feel me? Mm. But other than that, when I got to general population, it was too much going on. Like you get a porter job. Mm. I didn't get no porter job though. But, like, you can move around. You coming out five times a day, four times a day, right. hour here, hour there, go to the rec yard. So it was kind of keeping my mind busy. But I slowed down writing music because it was a lot of, you know, a little fake politics, if they want to call it. it slowed down writing music in the sense that you didn't want the guards to be, uh, they were getting upset about you writing music or what? Nah, it's just, I wasn't used to a celly. You feel me? Uh. I'm fighting serious time, so it's smokers coming in for two <laughs> weeks. And then I have a celly for two weeks, and he leave. And then I got another celly, then he leaves. So I'm got to get used to new niggas every day. So over and like, over, you just got a different weird weeks, ass they person. They go to court, you have a celly, y'all get close, and then like y'all be real cool. And then, oh, bro, I'm going home. Like what the fuck? Now I got to wait on my room empty for a day. Then here come ten new niggas at one in the morning. Which one coming in here? I'm at the door. Then you feel me? You got. But most of my cellies was cool. What's the the worst experience you have with one of them? Uh. He was just talking to himself. I'm like, you got to get the fuck out of my room, bro. What is you on? Yeah. Yeah, man. I told him, get up out of here, bro. Did all the Crips, when you get locked up, did all the Crips try to, like, line up behind you and, like, you become their leader? Uh, man. Because <laughs> you're, like, well-known and shit? Man, I was well-known, but I wasn't trying to put myself in that situation because that was going to have me back where I was at, man. You don't just try to become the leader when you go I, in? I, I was trying to lead them the right way, though. Mm, you feel me? Right. I was like, man, uh, I got a gang of books in my cell. Right. 100 books. You feel me? 50 books. You can ask anybody on way. I'll get somebody some, you know, some books. Be like, hey, bro, read this. This is Slight Edge. You know, a lot of, like, knowledge books, wisdom books. You feel me? And I see people fighting cases, serious time, and I try to help them get through it. If I'm overhearing them on the phone, like, oh, getting into it with that girl, like, calm down, bro. I was really trying to show them, you know, it's more to life in there. So you just actually, there. you went in with, like, a positive mentality. No, I went already. in there with a negative, but 23 and 1 made me go positive. Really? Yeah, but I still, you know, I have my flashbacks. So I'll start tripping in a minute, but yeah, I feel like, man, it's, it's more money out here to, right. to get. Yeah, because, I mean, from an outsider perspective, not saying that you're guilty of what you were locked up for, but it does seem like maybe you were not living the life that you should have been, given that you basically, you know, were kind of on the cusp of really making it music-wise. You're starting to do all these millions of views. People are really fucking with you. A, a lot of people out there might be wondering, like, why you would even end up in that situation. Or do you feel like you actually didn't make a mistake? Uh. I feel everybody make mistakes in life, but I feel a lot of people out here rapping shit they ain't dead, you feel me? Mm. And I wasn't trying to be that rapper. That's where I fucked up at too, though, but I was rapping when I was really living at the time, so it was like, I shouldn't been doing that now. As I look back, I'm like stupid, so like I changed my ways, but I was really living when I rap. If I'm saying this, I'm going to go do it. I don't want to be the rapper rapping some tight ass, oh, this, that, that, and then you catch him on video running and shit. Like, mm. or you just got your ass beat talking all that shit, you feel me? Right. Or like getting caught lacking my chain snatch or something like I'm talking all this. I'll strip you and all that on my songs. And you feel me? I don't just talk crazy, crazy, but I still talk enough, but... As long as I can back it up, that's all that matter. Right. But, I mean, like, not getting your chain snatched and, and not being a punk is one thing. But, like, actually doing dirt, <laughs> per se, like, you know, being out there trying to make money illegally is kind of like a different thing where, you know, that's just you being, like, overtly ambitious. Uh, it's true. I ain't need that money. I was good. I had a bands. I had a condo. I had all my jewelry. I was on, you feel me? Mm. But, you know. I really took a case for somebody, honestly. Really? Yeah, he's just anonymous, though. He's not on this case, though. So you've... He what? Oh. He's, he never got, you know, arrested. But that's how serious you, you are about not snitching, is that you wouldn't say anything even if you weren't actually there? Man, I can't I can't go like that. That's why I already know you know you say you want to talk about it, but... Uh, right. Yeah, that shit's out. We can't do that. You feel me? Everybody in the case... Stayed solid? Yeah. You still uh, fuck with all of them? Yeah. For, okay. uh, my boy Beakers, he, out, he a rapper. He on Instagram right now, rapping Beakers RC on Instagram. Okay. He got his flow going. Shout out my boy. He the one got probation. Then my my co-defendant, he's still in prison. That's because he caught a new charge in there, though. They allegedly, they saying he socked the guard and shit. Mm. So he was supposed to get out July 16th wow. on his three-year date. But uh, 
I talk to him, you know. I send him money and shit. We cool. That's my boy. That's what's up. Let's and it was on us three, but on a, if you read the discovery, it say four suspects, but the other one. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know him. But so you um have vocal been vocal in the past about these snitching allegations not being true, but how do you feel about them? Like, like where does that come from? Why do people feel so comfortable saying this? Come from uh, my California case. You feel me? Okay. I had a friend. I ain't gonna give him no clout. What was my friend? You feel me? But uh, he got arrested on the case. What did you feel me? But he be lying on Instagram saying he was in the back seat of the car. He like, like, I don't want to get too deep because I, look, I, I got a case in Vegas right now. Yeah, what what but, was your LA case though? A uh, burglary. Okay, right, right. But I had a, I still got a warrant, not a warrant, but like we fixing it right now because they didn't want to extradite me from Vegas back to California because uh-huh. of COVID. So right now, my lawyer Michael Becker is dealing with this case still, trying to run it concurrent with the time I got right now. Oh wow! So my case still open on me. All of them took time. My brother was my co-defendant, and the other dude, they both did eight months in the county. Uh huh. My big brother, my blood brother. Wow. You feel me? So right now, we trying to run it concurrent, or it's possibly I probably got to do eight months in in a little bit. God damn. Yeah, so it's like eight that. Eight months, that would be the amount over the three years that you already did that would be, you'd be facing? Yeah, but my lawyer said, I already did enough time. You feel me? That that ain't even like, I think I should be straight. Maybe they'll give me probation. Right. And a felony or something. Uh-huh. But that shit's done. That's why I ain't really been just all out trying to interview about it because at the end of the day, I'm the only one still fighting this case. Everybody else, you feel me, done with the case. Right. You feel me? Damn, so... How does it feel? How long have you actually been home now? I've been home. I came home almost a month. Okay. On the 12th, make a month. How does it feel? Do you feel like you mentally are pretty much back to normal? Because there's always like a transitional phase when uh, you come home, right? It was kind of weird the first day, man. It was <laughs> how, like, so? how so? Because I've been going in and out of jail since I was 13. Right. But I'll do three months. I'll do six months camp juvenile programs, you right. know. I've been to L.A. County and stuff, but I've never been gone for this long. So when I came home, the word different. You feel me? Like mm. my kid, you know, my daughter, my son, they was two when I left. Right. So they five now. They talking. They want to tell me what to do. I'm like, what's going wow. on? You know, everybody looking older. And how hard was that not seeing your kids? Man, I had to teach him uh, ABC to a jail phone. It was real hard. Wow. Yeah, for sure. That's rough. But it must feel great being back around them all. Yeah, yeah, it'd be good, man. Just, you know, situations with their mothers. It's crazy that uh, you were, like, on COVID time the majority of the time that you were locked up. Yeah, and as soon as I got sent to general population, it was COVID, so general population wasn't even going how it's supposed to go. Oh, so they're not letting letting you, like, sit around all They was letting out 12 people at a time, Mm. all type of, you know. But, man, I caught COVID in there. Man, man, everybody catching COVID in jail. Yeah, it wasn't that bad when you had it. Oh, yeah, it was bad. I'm a phone head, so I wake up 6, 7 in the morning. As soon as the tear pop, I'm on the phone trying to break the bitch, you feel me? Right. And I'm on the phone, but... (sighs) I caught COVID and uh, man, I ain't come out the room for six days. My celly, uh, he used to have to call my mom and tell her I had it. But look, if you tell the CEOs you got COVID, they gonna put you in twenty three hour lockdown, isolate you for two weeks. I was not going back there. Oh, I didn't so tell them I had hide no COVID. Your COVID. Man, I was buying IV profen off commissary. Wow, that was my COVID, and I was waking up shaking, cold. It was crazy. I'm talking about it's 12 people. If you're a porter and you working, that's the best job in there. So you got two porters who passing out the food, don't want to tell the police because they're going to lose their job and they fight murder cases. So they everybody walk around looking like they're going to pass out. Wow. For sure, yeah. That's fucking scary. Define breaking a bitch on the phone. <laughs> Let's come back to that. What, 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 what kind of hobby is that when you're locked up? Man, dress and finesse, man. You can still <laughs> finesse through the phone. But like girls that you knew before you went away, or are wow. you the type of dude who's like finding girls on these weird prison dating sites? Oh hell no. no. You don't do that? I got weird I got a whole uh DM full of them. You oh. hear me? I don't gotta go to them. I was getting random fan letters. So right. a couple of bitches came and really helped me out that I didn't know. You feel me? All of a sudden those fans start yeah. to seem very valuable. Like yeah. maybe they can put money on my books. Yeah. Maybe they can come pay fuck. me or pay me no attention. You ain't get no conjugal visit though? Hell no, I wish I could. Yeah. I was trying to get this correction officer, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like really hard to get? Like you have to be in like prison and you got to be in prison. You got to do all sure. kinds of paperwork and shit to consequent visits. You probably have to be married or something. Yeah, right? I ain't, I ain't, uh-uh, none of that. That's just Nate sucks. Daniel. God damn. 
What do you do? What do you do like that primal sexual part of your brain? What do you do when you come home after that long ass stretch? Yeah, rest in peace to the female. You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> you had something lined up? Lined up? What? <laughs> That's crazy. Can you tell me if you had a phone while you were locked up? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> hey. I just don't know if, like, is there anything they could do to you after the fact if you were to admit I'm gonna to it? I'm going to just say this. You get called with a phone in Vegas, it's not like California, you feel me? They put an escape charge on you. Really? Yeah. So wow. I don't know which they talking about. I ain't have Nathan here. That's interesting. Holy shit. I ain't have Nathan. So would you rather be locked up in L.A. or in, in Vegas, like, having done both? Which one was more? Because, like, L.A., you got weird-ass I mean, gang shit. I mean, it, it's gangs, but, like, this is what I say about gangs. This is what I realized in jail. We'll be beefing on the streets, right? Because I, I beef with the insane Crips, you know? I ain't going to say I beef with them, but my hood beef with them. To, I really yeah. care about a bag right now. You mm -hmm. feel me? But, like, Long Beach, basically. All our hoods beef, you feel me? OT Genesis, he from Two Ends. I'm from Brick Boys, 52nd on the north. You know, the insane Crips on the east side. Mm -hmm. You got a couple rappers over there, the uh, Asian boys. You, you got fuck some with the Asian them. boys? They cool. I know a couple of them. My jeweler eight from Asian boys. Name okay. Young. Shout out Young. Right. But this is what I was saying, though, like... We all get it, get it to beef. Not the Asian boys, but I'm just saying Long Beach. Period. Right. We'll go to jail for murder, and then we'll get to prison. In county, you can fight, but when you get to prison, it's called a Long Beach card. Right. So we in prison, you can't fight no more. What's the whole point of coming here with y'all? Anybody from Long Beach is united. We all you... together. Really? So it's like we kill each other to go hang out together. I'm cool. I'm gonna stay at home and uh, get this back. I'm not gonna come hang out with somebody who killed my homeboy. Mm. And you can't just say, "Oh, I want to fight him." Right. It got to go through politics now. It's like, bro, we did all this to get here and live with them for the rest of our life. Right. I'm cool. We might as well, you feel me, be cool living with them now. I'm not going to do that dumb ass shit. Right. So when we're watching you, you know, all those years ago doing the Zach TV interview and say cheese and stuff, was was your brain, your young brain not capable of sort of realizing that this was a bad mentality to have? Like like if we had asked you, if, if that version of you saw you saying that now, what would you have thought of this? I would have said, fuck all the outs right now on this interview. You feel me? <laughs> right. <laughs> but, nah, it helped me. I ain't going to lie. It helped me. 23 away helped me. At first, I was like, oh, they did me cold. Mm. They feed me. They doing me wrong. But when I really sat back and read and got my mind together and looked at life from a different perspective and reevaluated myself, I started looking at life different. Like, mm. it ain't worth it. You feel me? Definitely. Because we, we going to be in prison with them. I literally was just in prison with the insane. Them are, you know, worst enemies. And right. I was just, and they traded me with nothing but love. I hit the yard. I walk in the, uh, what was that, 7B? Uh -huh. And High Desert State Prison, I hit the unit. You know, I signed the waiver to go general population. They try to do the same shit there to me. Right. Oh, no, you can't. What? Sign, what? I'm not going nowhere. I signed you, you feel me? Right. You know, when I signed that, they had moved me like two days later. I went to parole board to see if you get parole. They don't tell you. You got to go to parole board, sit here like you in trial. Huh. I'm like, what? So I'm talking to parole board. As soon as I leave from parole board, the next morning they wake me up and move me to a unit. But I was in like a cool unit, like a level one. It was all cool people when you first had prison if you ain't got in trouble yet. So they took me to the worst unit. I'm like, I just left parole board. It seemed like I ain't going home because they just sent me over here. And when I hit there, I walk in first person, the porter. Oh, man saying, I'm like, oh, okay. You feel me? I don't know how. I know Cali politics was like that. So when I get there, I'm like, cool. I make my bed. I'm like, damn, I got ops in here. I'm going to run my face and shit going to be straight. I get in my cell. they like, niggas got bankers. I'm like, oh, shit. You feel me? I'm like, what the fuck? And then they like, oh, he from there too? He from there? It's four of them? Only me from my hood with four of them. So I'm like, we got yard in an hour? Uh -huh. You feel me? Did Let me get the like sharpening. So real that at, oh, wait, 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 what? I said we got yard in the hour. I got four ops. Let me get the sharpening some shit. That's you what you me? were thinking. Hell yeah, that was my. And you first just thing. got in there. I just, they ain't finna kill me. What are you yard? sharpening at that point? Like you haven't even obtained like a, a thing that you can I'm sharpen. This shit off desks, whatever <laughs> it come to be. I'm not going to that yard like that. The yard is is the yard. Right. But I hit the yard. You feel me? And uh. And I hit the yard. He was like 30 something. He came and hollered at me, like, hey, come here. He like, look, we long beat you, feel me? Uh -huh. whoop, whoop, whoop. Let me see your paperwork and all that. Boom, you know, show, you got to do that when you touch prison. I get my paperwork on my chart out there. Right. He like, you good or insane, you feel me? Shout out my boy, Boo Gangster. Uh -huh. he, he a good people, you feel me? He was like, whoop, whoop. I'm like, y'all want me to get in on with somebody? Like, he like, nah, it ain't like that out here, you feel me? It's politics. We 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 small. We already in somebody else's state. So he's like, we run together. So I'm like, shit, I guess Long Beach then. But. Right. 
That's what it was. But, was so afraid. did you end? Up, would you be more likely to have a problem with like a Hispanic person, a white guy, or like a, a black guy who's not uh, under the Crip umbrella? I love Hispanics and whites. I got Hispanics in my family, so but it's easier for you to get along with them. Yeah, because I it's... like Hispanics. Mm. When I throw <laughs> concerts, they all there. They support me more than black people. So, but in prison, it is. It'll go up over a soup. Say like a black person get a soup from a Hispanic, right? And he don't pay him back, and then he like, all right, y'all got two days to pay back, and they don't want to do it. Oh yeah, everybody better go to the yard already because mm. it's going up over that soup. I'm talking about twenty five cent, right? Or even if. We go use their phone, you feel me? It'll be two, three black phones, two, three Mexican phones. And if somebody go touch their wrong phone, it's up. You got to do it. Yeah, it's up. But, you know, it was cool. But it you, was going to go up one you time. You held it together, though? You didn't get in any serious trouble while you were in there? Uh, just little fights and shit, but not no serious shit like no stabbings or nothing. Right. So let me ask you this. You're, you're, when you got in trouble, you're pretty much on, like, the, the highest point in your career, right? Like, yeah. you're, you're signed to Snoop and stuff. What, what, what is the conversation like between you and Snoop as you realize that you got to go do this time with you as his artist? Uh, shit. It was shit. I just thought about man. You went through this situation too. You he was down for murder. Mm -hmm. Everybody make mistakes at the wrong place at the wrong time. You feel me? Right. So I was just like, I got myself in this. I'm still young. I'm 21 years old at the time. I'm like shit. If they give me six to 15, I might be 27. But uh, I'm gonna go home one day. Yeah. And I'm gonna just keep rapping. They could take everything from me, but they can't take my mind. Right. They could take everything. I mean, that's a good mentality. 27. 21 to 27 is rough, but I mean, it's not the end of the world, I guess. I mean, it felt like it. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, it's pretty close, <laughs> but it's not the actual. It's not 20. You know, 20 is pretty bad. You go in at 20 and you get out at 40, like Jesus Christ. Shit, my last cell, y'all just left prison. He went down to 18. He 27. He get out when he 42. So shit. <sighs> I look at that. I look at other people. I got some. It was three people I took a liking to in the county jail. Shout out Buddha. They from hoods out there in Vegas. They uh -huh. from Double O Four Hood Bloods. They all on the case and they all fighting a uh, death penalty. And they all 19, 20, 21. They came in around the same time as me. They maxed them out too because allegedly it's all over the news. You feel me? It was a shooting and a little girl got hit. So they trying to max them out. But they trying to pay it like they, you know, you know how they trying to pay it. But they, they going to beat their case out. Right. Hey, innocent. So, but was was Snoop like supportive, or were you, were you actually talking to him, or did that kind of like cause a? a no, a we rift? real good. Okay. Snoop, good people. You feel me? But you you're still in communication with him? Yeah, 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 yeah. For sure, I'm about to do a song with him. Are you still signed to him? Nah, our contract was it ended before I even went to jail. Okay. I took an 18 month contract in like 2016. Okay. So that been over even while I was out. He just he told me like I want you to be like your own boss. I want to teach you. I want you to see you get played out here. Mm. So basically he just taught me the ropes <laughs> of the game and shit. But if I need anything for sure. It's I weird because him. he is like so I would assume that Snoop is so rich that to him signing a pop and new street artist is dope. It's cool. It's good for his image. It's good for, you know, it's it's something he probably wants to be involved with, but it also probably doesn't even scratch the fucking surface of what he's doing business wise. Yeah, so he, he with Martha Stewart. I'm all on TV. He do it a whole yeah. bunch. That's why I appreciate him. He don't gotta sign nobody. He rich forever. Yeah. He rich through he gone. You know, shout out Snoop, he just lost his mom, you know. So mm -hmm. he going through a lot. I was talking to him my first couple of weeks. I was supposed to get the song, but when his mom passed away, I ain't about to hear him about no music. He got a cope, I know. If I lost my mama, I wouldn't want nobody hitting me up unless you saying, you know, sorry for your loss or something. So, one hundred percent, yeah, that's fair. When, when, how hard was it for you to keep up on what's going on outside of the the jail? Like, did you feel like you had any kind of understanding? I feel like jail, no shit before it happened. You feel me? <laughs> jail be talking. Jail talk. They get on the phone. Oh really? Whoop whoop just got killed. Whoop whoop. They get right off the phone. Mm. So jail here, everything. You got all these people from L.A. from there, so they know what's going on. Like. Nipsey, when you know, mm, when Nipsey died, while you were gone, huh? Mm -hmm. Wow, Nipsey was my boy. You feel me? Right. How I much? Was, how much time did you spend with him? How, how well did you know? Uh, we, I knew him good. I used to. I ain't gonna lie. That was the only rapper I really looked up to. So like, a before I went to jail, I've been listening to him since like 2009 when I was in like middle school. Mm. So I, I really know all Nip. You know, he but was like, really like a hero to so many fucking kids from out here. Yeah, for sure, man. He for sure, man. I used to listen to Nip every day. You so know? many rappers of like the current generation. I just have that conversation with them. And it's like over and over I hear that. 
because he think positive. He got an optimistic brain. You know, mm. I think he played chess. He knew how to make everybody go to his kind of like from L.A. Yeah, the worst enemies come together. That's smart. But he bad had his mindset. You don't see him dissing people in right. his videos. You don't see if you go back, he not just big gang banging every video, but he was a real one. You, you saw him me? hit the right balance of being a street dude and being a businessman that is always tricky for rappers it to was figure hard. out. Yeah, it yeah. was hard. That's why I think I think he, you know, his pride when he died. Right. He didn't want to look like, oh, I'm a bitch. He stood at his store like, well, what it is, what it ain't. You know, I, I respect him for that, but I feel he should have just like, I don't know, man. I think mm -hmm. he should have just like, I ain't going to say left his hood, but I feel like he should have just left the store to them. You know, he he was too big, you know, but mm -hmm. I feel like the reason why there wasn't no guns in the parking lot and all that, because he was so used to going over there when he felt like it, nothing ever happened. Right. So he was used to it, and then his enemies know not to go over there. So when his homeboy, whatever, allegedly, whatever happened on video, I, don't, I didn't really... Like, when I looked it up on YouTube, the videos be blurred, so I really don't know. It's just mm. stories, so I'm not going to say that on this interview. I, I can relate to, like, the mentality because we had the store on Melrose for all those years, and then one day a fucking crazy-ass fan kid, like, breaks in with a gun and oh, tries to put the gun to my head and shit like that, and they ended up beating the fuck out of him. But it's like, if I got killed in that situation, everybody would have said, like, oh, Adam's, like, he was stupid. He, he was doing his live stream out the back of his store right on Melrose, et cetera. Like... For me in that moment, I just felt regular. Like I felt like I was just doing some normal ass shit. I'm sure that Nip felt like he was just doing some regular ass shit by standing yeah. there because he's got 10, however, however many years mm -hmm. of being respected in that environment, of never having anybody try to do some yeah. fuck shit to him, you know? He was comfortable with it. So he just happened to, you know, bad situation. They say that he was going on bad information, like that this, this accusation that he tossed out was not actually accurate. Yeah. I don't know. But. Either way. I don't know. I just feel like, I don't know, man. I really looked up to him, and uh, I feel like, yeah, he was comfortable for sure because he was just standing right there, mm. and that's just crazy how he died because when I was in jail, I, you know, everybody, even my mama know I love Nipsey Music. You mm. mean? I really supported him before. I don't I don't know about how everybody, oh, victory lap. I'm going back to Bullets Ain't Got No Name, one take three. Mm. I'm singing that still. You feel me? I still play that in the car since I came home. So, like, a lot of people jumped on this bandwagon. I feel like they didn't give him enough star power till he died. That's mm. what I don't respect. It's true. I feel like they, like, as soon as he died, Nipsey just, Nip, nah, he been doing that. Like, I passed out turkeys. I got footage of it, me, Russell Westbrook, and Nipsey, like, fool and all that, and yeah. Jason and all of us. Yeah. You know, at Jesse Owens Park in L.A. Yeah. You feel me? And then at his grand opening, I was there, too. I seen him a couple times at shows with Snoop. We real cool, you know? He used to comment on my shit, like, man, Young King, keep pushing. He followed me on Instagram still, even while, you know, since the shit happened. But yeah. he a real good dude. Man. Yeah, definitely. Super sad. Another person that uh, was lost and that was kind of crazy is you did your Zach TV interview like outside your apartment building where you grew up or whatever, like two days before he died. Mm hmm. That's crazy. No, no, the interview was in Nevada at my cousin's house. Oh, that's right. But where yeah, it was? two days later, okay. that's why we had the interview. I thought it would never come out because I was just with him and he flew back in town to Chicago. I used to look up to Zach because, you know, like Rondo number nine, uh, yeah. LA Capone, Lil Dirk before he was famous. They used to do interviews on there in like 2010, 11. You were always a big drill fan, all that shit. Yeah, I used to fuck with their music. I fucked it with uh, LA Capone a lot. Yeah. And then Rondo and Lil Dirk for yeah. sure. Definitely. They hard. I've been watching. I watch a little Dirk really rise. Yeah. From like crazy, when he right? had L's with French Montana. <laughs> and uh, this ain't what you want and shit when he was signed to Def Jam. But when Fr French Montana said that he put Lil Dirk on the other day, Lil nah, Dirk kind of responded uh, and was like, cap. No, nah, that's uh, out. Yeah. I, just for me, outside looking in, I don't know Dirk. I met him, though. So I do know him, but I don't know him like. French Montana buddy, buddy. gave him a good look early in his career. But I wouldn't say that that was the, the thing that made no, Dirk what no. he was. Like, what made Dirk what he was is the fact that he kept growing really hard with yes. the music. He didn't stop. And he grew a lot, like more than any of those other drill artists from that era in nah, Chicago. He, he just got really good. He for sure kept. Dirk was in like. How I like, first heard of Dirk, because I wasn't listening to Dirk at first. I heard of L.A. Capone, rest in peace, one of his boys in Rondo. Right. Uh, to play for keeps. Lil Dirk in a video, like, in the slums with them. You feel me? And when Rondo went down for murder and L.A. Capone got killed, I'm like, damn, who I can keep up to listen to these niggas? Mm. And I, I uh, took a liking into Lil Dirk. So, French Montana, I watched it. L's up for them hitters and all that song. That didn't put Lil Dirk on. He capping. Mm. 
Yeah. That was like a cool era, but it wasn't. It was many years later that people really started thinking no, that Dirk was yeah, the GOAT. Man, that was 2012, 2013. Like, Lil Dirk really started busting through the door around 2017 with Manipulator, Dirk Yo <laughs> Crazy, and all that. You're a real student at all that. I, I'll be watching. You got to pay right. attention. I like it. For sure. But Zach was a cool ass dude, man. Like, like, would you have ever have imagined that he was the kind of dude that would get caught up in a situation like that? Nah, it's just weird how he died. I'm like, what the fuck? Right. Somebody texted me off his phone like Zach did. I'm like, what? I'm like, that interview from out the phone. window. Huh? From his phone. From his phone. So I think it was the girl he the, was The with. interview wasn't even out yet at that point? No. His family Literally put it out or his, his team or I whatever? I don't know. I was in the county. I never seen the interview until to be 100. I still ain't watched the interview. Why? I seen it on YouTube, but I've been home. I've been going through so much. I'm going to go watch it, though. Right. But I for sure looked up his Instagram and showed my condolences. My favorite part about that interview is that you're having a hard time thinking of the Crip rappers that you want to shout out, and then you shout out AD. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, AD, because he a real one. He cool. <laughs> that was like when he was first coming out, too, I guess. Yeah, yeah, AD cool people. Yeah. I uh. Like, got to connect with him through Carver T. He from Compton. Oh, okay. That's my up. boy. Nice. Big homie and shit. He always told me fuck with AD. So, I've been seeing AD on your shit. I had to go check out your YouTube channel yeah. before I came. I'm uh, like, yeah, I brought you up earlier. We should definitely get you guys on an episode together at some For point. Sure. That would be hard. Mm -hmm. um, do you, like, in terms of, like, what's going on with the music in L.A. or outside of it and everything, How do, is there anything that you actually think is dope right now? Or what are your thoughts on what's been going on musically or in the culture since you came? From me looking in, L.A. LA rappers, I feel like, be honest, LA rappers is haters. Everybody want to be the biggest rapper in LA and they don't want to put nobody on. Like, you go down south, you see all them collabing, mm -hmm. all them bringing each other on, buying each other cars and jewelry, you feel me? LA, man, everybody, I'm the best rapper. I'm the best rapper. I'm the best rapper. Niggas ain't even got a million followers yet. Like, bro, shut up. Really? Just, just stick together, bro. I feel like you're talking about Draco. Who, Draco? Yeah. Nah, I ain't saying about Draco. Draco, cool. <laughs> I, uh, okay. I ain't gonna say I fuck with him. I don't know him like that, but he cool. I'm right. just saying all these rappers. It's just everybody. You feel me? Yeah. But I mean, half of them don't. Half of the rappers in LA can't work with the other half just off principle because of the gang shit, right? And then on top of that, there's all kinds of like weird little friction and shit from all kinds of other things. So there are rappers who can like work together, but it'll be like a clique of rappers that work together just because they're like allowed to. Like all the gang shit, like if you look at Atlanta, like yeah, they have all kinds of street shit, gang shit, but it's, it's not like they're nearly as separated, I don't think. I ain't gonna say gang, cause half of these niggas in LA is not like you feel me. These rappers not outside like that to be like, oh, I can't fuck with him. You feel me? Yeah. I I do a song with anybody from LA. You feel me? I don't care where you from, but you really don't like the people that you actually like. Like because the issue would be that if you did a song with certain people, then your fucking friends are gonna be no. mad, right? That's why you. That's why I just go back to what I said. There ain't no niggas really outside. Cause if you really a nigga in your hood, mm. I'm like, bro, I'm about to do a song with bro, and whatever happened, happened. You feel me? But I'm not finna go do no song with niggas saying fuck my hood and my dead homies. That's how. Oh yeah. Well, you feel me? Before it's like, all right, I beef with two ends. OT and them from there. You feel me? I was cool with Vince Staples before I went to jail. Uh -huh. I, I don't care if the homies know. I tell him we on the interview. It's going to go out. Like, I was cool with Vince Staples. It's business. You feel me? Right. You feel me? We was straight. You feel me? But niggas can't tell me what to do and how to do it. Mm -hmm. He ain't saying fuck my hood, fuck my dead homies. He rapping with different people. He rapping for, you know, like whites and Mexicans. He not saying nothing about. <laughs> he'll say Long Beach or something. But he ain't songs. just right here. Yeah, but he not saying fuck my hood. Oh yeah, yeah. you feel me? Yeah. Or fuck my, or I'm gonna slide up on him and all that. Like, nah, right. knock it off. Definitely. You feel me? So I feel like if we stuck together, a lot of us in LA would blow harder. Mm, it's true. Yeah. Do you feel like, uh, like I don't know? You come home and it's kind of like you want to just go and collaborate with everybody and just do a million different things. But have you been kind of? pacing yourself or no or, i really don't want to do no futures be mm -hmm. honest with you but i will do it to help each other you feel me i don't i don't need no features I, i've been doing numbers by myself i feel like i can do it myself but mm -hmm. at the end of the day i'm not trying to be like a thirsty ass rapper like oh i'm just the best and i'm not finna collab with him because of this and that and this and that you feel me right now if we can help each other get to the next level that's what we should do because be honest la rappers it ain't too many of them really on niggas is fake on but does your pride stop you from like reaching out to people and just trying to work together, like people that you might not be super close to? 
Now I feel like if I see somebody at a show or something, mm. and we we at a More show natural, or something, like what's yeah. the deal, bro? Like we gonna get something in? You feel me? Like I got a song with YG. You feel me? Mm. How we met? He came up to me at a concert. You feel me? Really? But I would have. I wanted to do a song with him before, but you feel me? He big as fuck. I'm like, nigga, this before Snoop, so I'm not finna just hit and, like be another nigga in his DM. You feel me? Right. But when we seen him, I just felt somebody tap me. I'm just like, I turn around. I'm with Snoop. I'm looking at Snoop performing. Somebody tapped my shoulder. I turn around. He's like, what's up, blood? I'm mm. like, what's the deal, fool? We start chopping up He like we gotta get one You He can me? say what's up blood to you And that's not a weird thing I'm from Long Beach I'm from a curb city We don't beef for blood So Right But it's not that. like Kind of weird for him To like refer to you as that uh, okay. This ain't the 90s That's or good age. enough yeah. This ain't free Ray Rick Rock today, You <laughs> feel me like Oh man Why you say blood to me Like I fuck with blood You feel me Right Definitely Um. Okay So one thing I wanted to ask you about is you used to go really hard with the weed and the lean in your interviews and all that. You were like very into that. Where are you at in terms of that? You stopped with the weed? Yeah, I stopped smoking weed. I could smoke weed now. It ain't because of the papers or nothing, you, but you, I just feel it make me lazy, bro. Like mm -hmm. before I went to jail, I record like one, two songs a week. Now since I've been home, I only been home a month. I got like 20, 20 songs. Right. I got three, four videos. I make me lazy. Really? I ain't going to say lean bad, but it, it depends on, you know, the occasion. Like, if I'm at the crib and there ain't nothing to do for the rest of the night, I'll sip some juice. Or okay. i hit the blunt one time, but I'm not into that. Like, oh, I got to wake up and smoke. Nah, I got shit to do, bro. You weren't getting fucked up at all while you were locked up? Hell no, I ain't. No, nothing. They, man, it was spice in that motherfucker. I'm not smoking <laughs> that shit. I hear people outside be smoking that shit, too. What, spice? I had a, a girl in here the other day telling me she, about a famous who, rapper saying he'd be smoking mad spice. Oh, yeah, he hallucinated off the game for sure. He finito, whole brain cells gone. You never even tried it? I hit spice before, I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> How was I it? tried it one time and it down. Was you, it weird? Hell yeah, I'm like, I don't dare in front of whoop my cell ass. What the fuck is this, it had bro? You up like that. It's not like being high like weed as you like ready to spouse nah, out. I got you feeling like you 3D, <laughs> body ain't there, head over there. No, nah, I'm cool. I don't I don't do like drugs. Like I don't do right. hard drugs. I never tried it, nothing. Like I don't do Molly cocaine, nothing that, none of that, no Molly, right. none of that. I'm not doing none of that. Right. I'm not gonna be smoked out. Do you out. think it's it's okay for gangbangers to do those things or is that is that out for oh, you? Shit, that's the only reason why they gangbang party. They off the <laughs> I mean, I, yeah, like as a young man, I, I would have never thought that. And then you get older and you realize like oh, a lot of these gangsters would be snorting coke and all that. Yeah, I don't do that. Uh -uh. That's, how, that's for neat. But now they kind sure. of talk about in songs and shit. Yeah, yeah. Rappers talking about taking ecstasy with the homies. <laughs> yeah, they snort lines and shit. Now nah, I'm cool. I ain't saying it's bad. I ain't going to judge nobody. Mm. But I'm just saying I don't want to do it. Right. Definitely. Yeah, you come home, like, super motivated to uh, really get it cracking in terms of your yeah, career I'm and hungry, everything? Yeah, I'm hungry, man. I'm now. persistent, man. I'm really I'm really an artist now. At first, I was a crip, you know, famous <laughs> crip. Just doing it to represent yeah. your neighborhood and shit? Yeah, I was doing... Nah, I always had a passion for music since I was young, mm. but I was living, like, living a life. Like, I'm finna go to the studio. I'm finna go to the hood right now. Like, Snoop moved me to Hollywood Boulevard. I was standing in the Vine Apartments, condos. He so he was, that's how involved he was with your career. He actually cared about where you're staying at. Yeah, and he everything. signed me like a real contract, really put me on, moved me. I went on a world tour with Wiz Khalifa, Kevin Gage, and AI Eco 2016. How was that? The high road tour. It was fun. Yeah. It was lit. Did you get to see all kinds of shit you never seen before? Yeah, because I never left the hood till he did that. So, yeah, I was, you feel me? Wow. Big bitches, big everything. That's amazing. I, I, uh, me and Casey Veggies, we used to hang out. And then I used to hang with Lil Uzi sometime on the tour. He was really? cool. And Kevin Gates, DJ, and his artist, OG Booby Black, we was all straight with being on the tour bus and shit. Wow. Chilling and shit. That's some fucking crazy shit to imagine right there. Fun, man. Lil Uzi, dude. That's crazy. It must be wild That's for you. before he took off. Yeah, right? Mm -hmm. I remember going to see him and shit when he was kind of like a regular underground rapper. I didn't know who he was. Be honest with you, like we had DJ Drama uh, album release party. Yeah. And uh, Snoop, like, come get in this picture. I'm like, come get in the picture. I see Lil <laughs> Uzi, but I don't know who he is. So I see DJ Drama, I'm like, that's Drama. I get in the picture, but the whole time I ain't knowing who Lil Uzi is. So like, I get off the tour. I was real cool with Lil Uzi before I knew who he was. I get off the tour and I'm watching Amigo, that bad and bougie and shit. Mm -hmm. And I'm in my condo and I'm like, wait, hold on. That's the. And then I looked up and I'm like, what the fuck? I was on. I seen him performing every night, but he wasn't on like that. You yeah, feel yeah. Me? But shout out Lil Uzi though, for sure. That's crazy. For sure. Um, 
Okay, let's see. Anything else that we need to ask you about? Did we ever? Uh, did you actually clarify with the snitching allegations, like why they're not true or what? What oh, the yeah. thing that people? No, think I just said it was is? an open case, so I'm not gonna get deep in the case. Oh, We're gonna right, do a part right, right. two, but I'm gonna tell you like this: like I came home, I went to my hood. A lot of niggas running Instagram and shit with shit, but I went to my hood, and the truth was no. I don't care about no Instagram. You know, Instagram ain't the hood. I was doing this shit since MySpace. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So it's like I went to my hood and cleared my name. You feel me? Right. We know the real. You feel me? And all that other shit is just eh, fuck Instagram. Niggas know what's really going on in my hood. You feel me? Do you have a shit list of people who said shit about you in regards to that? That if you see them, you need to have a conversation. Uh, uh, fuck a conversation. I'm a slap there for <laughs> sure. <laughs> any any big names on the list, or, or it's gonna be a surprise? Surprise oh, for no. sure. <laughs> Niggas can't get clout off my interview. It's a couple of people, you feel me? That's but, a good point, yeah. You but not, not too many. Niggas didn't know what we're really going on. You know, it's always two sides to the story. But mm. you feel me? A lot of niggas, like, really living on Instagram now. Like, do this for Instagram. Go live and say this. What happened? Like, wait, hold on, bro. You you talking about a case that's still open? What are you on Instagram for? You telling on us, you feel me? Mm. You was really telling, talking about he told on me. How he told on you? And you ain't even went to trial and I ain't took no stand on you, bro. You just told the police on me now, bro. I don't, nigga, I told the police I don't know you. Now you saying I know you. What the fuck going on, bro? Like, mm. you feel me? You making me hot, so I don't even know that dude, bro. Yeah. I still got an open case. I don't know. What are you talking about? I was asleep. Mm. I like it. For sure. You got to stay on the straight and narrow. Yeah, Instagram Instagram took over. Whatever Instagram say, it's mm -hmm. true now. I get on Instagram, I'm like, oh, woo, woo, gay. They can all go in this comments. Bro, I heard you gay. You gay. <laughs> you fucked him. You feel me? Like, shut up, bro. Like, right. you can go on Instagram. So I can have my homeboy take my chain and post a video. Mm. Oh, he got your chain. Go get it back. And right. then you'd be like, oh, this was the homie. They still going to be like, nah, 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 nah. <laughs> he took your chain, bro. Like, right. the whole time it was a little TikTok video, bro. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't, that's why I don't really like Instagram is weird as fuck. <sighs> yeah, the fact that people will like see something viral gravitate to it and then like not even like check in on whether it's real or not like there was a, a a fucking wannabe rapper who who pretended to steal my cat out of my old bike shop yeah he went in the shop with another cat that kind of looked like my cat and he ran out and filmed it holding the cat and i still to this day have people say like yo did you ever fucking smack the shit out of that dude who stole your cat i'm like hey, bro. i'm like bro i i had pictures of that cat on my only fan or my only fan. My Whoa, you got only <laughs> fans. Whoa. <laughs> I had pictures of the cat on my Instagram for like many years after that. Like y'all should have like, are you really not paying attention like that? But people, they'll see something viral and they won't even bother to inquire if it's real or not. Yeah, you know? I feel like this. It costs zero dollars. You feel me? A nigga can have a phone with no service. Mm. Take his homeboy, Jerry. Go flex. Go to Starbucks. Get on Wi-Fi. Post a picture. You feel me? It costs zero dollars to talk or go get on a nigga comment like, you a bitch. But if a nigga put a hundred dollar price tag against their mouth or their fingers before, I bet you they can't even pay their phone bill to go talk to shit they talking. You feel me? These niggas is yeah. bummed. It should be a crime for that. You feel me? They should go to jail for being bums, <laughs> for sure. I realized how bad it was because uh, at that old shop, for some reason there was an empty pint of lean just sitting around, and I would see everybody who came through picking that shit up and being like, yo, yo, to their homie, like, yo, yo, take a picture of me with it. What the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> with an empty pint. They, I'm like... <laughs> Bro, like, y'all are really, like, that thirsty to take a photo that makes you look like you're a drug addict? Like, that's crazy. Like, wow, bro. Like, they'll like, do anything. They'll go in the Beverly Center parking lot, see the foreign. Yeah. Let me shoot my video right here. All the time. Every like, day, shut right? the fuck up, bro. Go on Toro, at least. But I don't even th I feel like the kids are too smart to fall for it now. You know, like, the average kid in the hood, I feel like, still is smart enough to be like, oh, that's not his Lamborghini. Nah, you want to know something, though? <laughs> when, when it get too exclusive, you like, nah, that ain't his now. But yeah. it's certain shit, because a lot of mm. bitches be having babies with niggas who's fake flexing. I be like, bro, what the fuck? She got a baby with him? Mm. And then she, you catch her on Instagram three months after she had the baby, like, bum-ass nigga, you should have been knew that, bitch. Should have went to the clinic. <laughs> oh, man. That's hilarious. Um... Okay, so like, what what's the plan for world domination at this point? Like, how are you really? Because I feel like you're probably like one of the rappers who has like the most of a chance of like really like blowing up this year. Like, I feel like now that you're back, if you make the right moves, you could definitely like man. be a real real factor over the course of the next first year. First thing, put God first. That's okay. for sure. But. I'm in a studio daily. You feel me? I'm That's in the good. studio daily. I'm shooting videos. I make sure I got a video put up before I release one now. Mm -hmm. I move strategic. I got my royalties and masters and I was in jail. 
somebody had uh, stole stole my royalties and master. Not snooping them though. How they was, do that? Uh, before I went to jail, I had let somebody upload my music on DistroKid. Okay. So when I went to jail, he stopped answering phone calls and all that. So I'm in the middle of an entertainment lawyer getting my stuff back from him. But I, I still own my royalties and master. It's just my old music. But so is this somebody that you were real, real close to at yeah. one point? Yeah, his shit was under Get Dough Distribution, named JD. Yeah, Jank <laughs> Ball, bro. Okay. Yeah, he's a weirdo. Oh yeah, I do know him. Interesting. You do? Yeah, I met him before. Stole my shit for sure, but yeah. it ain't nothing like that. It's all good. Interesting. He 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 should have you know he should have just stuck it out with my little time. Mm -hmm. You feel me? And then we would have been on because right now the shit he stole my videos only been out a week two weeks and that's finna pass that shit. Right. In the next month or two I'm finna have one two three m on videos and when I left I had two three m and that shit took two years to work for. So I feel like if he would have stayed down for the come up he'd be right here with me. I was gonna keep it solid with him. It was a seventy thirty split. It was all love. But shit he blew it. You feel me? He could have been managed me and all that. But but now it took me to go to general read management books. Now I feel like my team, mm -hmm. I could teach people I grew up with how to do this shit. I don't need him. Could you ever imagine signing? Like, did the did the Snoop thing and that, did that leave a bad taste in your mouth? Or, or are you still kind of thinking about Because no. I feel like at, at some point, record labels are going to probably realize that you, you, you're you somebody they would want to invest in. I mean, I don't want to sign right now. but Because I feel like a label, they just get money, blow your Instagram up, you know, blow your YouTube up. That's cool. You feel me? Right. But I feel like they just investing in me. I feel like I can invest in myself, the money I'm making now, and return it to myself, and I'll be bigger. You mm -hmm. feel me? But I would take, like, a distribution deal, right. like, with a label. Yeah. I would take a distribution deal to, like, put out my shit. But I don't want to be in no contract. I don't want to be no slave. You feel me? Mm -hmm. They be stealing money, for sure. They contradict it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, at the very least, their uh, their their value is kind of questionable. I just want point. the right management team. Right. If you got connections... Like, you, you can get marketers to help me with Instagram. You can help me get venues to do my tours. You know, somebody who can help my YouTube or, you know, whatever connections we need. Or, got, you know, I feel like with that team behind me, we unstoppable. You looking forward to going on tour and doing all the stuff that you probably haven't done in so long? Yeah, I'm going uh, to start looking into a tour for, like, I don't want to just rush a tour because mm -hmm. it's going to be an independent tour. So I'm going to do it for, like, like after March, April, towards right. the summer. I'm going to put out at least an album. And a couple singles and like press them into the radio. I got a couple people at radio stations uh -huh. I'm gonna be talking to to get my song on there. I got a song that ain't like, you know, just I'm gonna go bang, bang somebody, you feel me? Yeah. Like try to change my image. I wanna do like music with everybody. Yeah. You feel Justin like Bieber, if it were for God's to Really? You like to work, do more pop type stuff? Yeah, you think I want, you can I, handle it? Yeah, I wanna change. You feel me? Look at Snoop. He mm. do everything. You feel me? He not just. I'm cripping one day. Nah, he with Martha Stewart one day. He with the Crips one day. I want to be like that. You feel me? Right. All these rappers want to stay in one image. You feel me? Yeah, I can't stay like that. That shit ain't going to last long. You feel me? For sure. Um, can I just get... I, I just need clarification on this. Why did your name have two O's, but it's pronounced Jabba? I was mad at myself when I went to the gym and really <laughs> sat down, right? So look... I was I, I started my 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 uncle rest in peace named me that when I was a baby. So when I was young, my hood do too. So when I was young uh, and like aim my space, I used to always put tools. Okay. So everybody knew me from that little YouTube. I used to have a YouTube channel rap when I was fourteen. So everybody I had a little following already in Long Beach. Right. So everybody knew to search up my name. I was in chill. I'm like, man, I need to change my whole shit. But I'm like, if I change it, it's too late. Uh. So that's why people be like, What's up, Juba? But it definitely I, you don't like Juba? Hell no, that shit sound like <laughs> that shit sound like some bullshit. It sounds like duty. And then I got tuba. RC. I got the RC. Boo -boo. They be like Jubark. Jubark. What the fuck? But I know you a fan when you say Juba for sure. You you listen to me, but you don't because you know I'm Jabba. You feel me? You that listen to me, don't you? Don't. So yeah. when somebody walk up like Juba, I'm like for sure, fan. What's up, bro? It is like, what it you is. Yeah. Picture, you, you, you're trying. Yeah, yeah. I don't even I don't even tell them it's Jabba. Yeah. I'll be like, all right. What's I mean, up, bro? My, my girl is Lena. And people come up to her on the street all the time. They'll say, I'm your biggest fan. I love you, Lena. And it's like, <laughs> you know, we just let it go because, like, who the fuck cares? But yeah. it is kind of weird that, like, they claim to be, like, super into it. But then they don't even pronounce it right. It's like, okay. I got sure. a silent O in my name. Yeah. <laughs> or it's a gang thing. Yeah. yeah. It's really that. Job alone. Even if other people find it confusing. I mean, there's a lot of. There's a lot of gang stuff that's confusing when you see people with the shirts with the big letters and they got different things crossed out and stuff. 
It's like you have to be a fucking mathematician to understand it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of people cross shit out and they ain't even did nothing to cross mm. that out. You feel me? So they need to stop crossing shit out. I'll ask in the group chat and they'll just tell me, Adam, don't worry about it. I've been seeing you doing uh, your stuff since Melrose. <laughs> yeah? Since before then? Mm hmm Damn, I wish we had got one you was back with, uh, then. Before Almighty you locked up, that would have been hard if we For had it sure. back in the Used day. Used to be with my boy Almighty Suspect. You fuck with the suspect still? Yeah, that's my boy. Okay. That's he was uh, always posting me, free me. Oh, one yeah. of the uh, only rappers out here really like free job, free really? job. He knew what's happening. I used to call him and all that uh, from the county sad. and shit. That's my boy. I've seen him since I've been on. Hell yeah. You, uh, yeah. That would have been cool, but uh, would you would you have some music on the way with him? Yeah, we in the middle of a song. We we was working on a song, but I told him I don't want to just put out anything. So yeah. like we working on a, a you know like a better better song. I want to really when we drop, I want it to be something big for both of us. I don't want it to be just a video. We hanging out like all my videos now. I did that in my hood and shit because you know oh well, you can't go and all the little. And I gave them what they wanted. You feel me? Yeah. But now nah, now it's like. I'm about to be like really doing movie Trying looking videos. Yeah, shit yeah, up another so, level. yeah, I'm not finna just have 20 niggas behind me standing me with lean cups and shit, <laughs> smoking yeah. blunts. I can't lie though, man. We were, before I knew Suspect or Frosty, we was banging their music like all the time, bro. Like we were really fucking with them. Actually, I should go back and listen to all that shit right now. It'll probably get me on my feels. Yeah, man. Almighty. Yeah, they killed yeah. it. They were and crazy. They be going then. crazy. Um, all right. So, yeah. This is, Fucking great interview. You're, you're a great conversationalist. I appreciate you sharing your whole story with me, man. Sure, I appreciate you too, man. I appreciate the interview. When you hit me, I'm like, oh, yeah, I need that. Okay. Were you not even thinking about doing an interview at that point? Because your old interviews are kind of iconic. Yeah, I, I really didn't want to do interviews when I got out because, like, my last interview with Say Chief before I went to jail is the reason how this case and all this shit started. Really? I was talking about my past life, like breaking in houses and shit. Oh, they used that and, against and, you. And all that. And the shit the nigga be saying about me, everything I said in that interview was into paper. Like, what the fuck? Really? Like, literally, I'm in the backyard like, oh, I'm here for 500 bands and this much and that. And when they like, oh, uh, it was like crazy questions. Like, uh, what do you say? How do you know where the people live? I'm like, oh, Asian people, shoes on a porch. I read the shit the nigga saying. I'm like, bro, this is the whole interview, bro. Is right. you serious? Like, it was an interview, but I'm telling him, like, oh, this was before rap. You feel me? I ain't saying, like, oh, I'm finna go hit the flock right now. So do you think that the way Sean Con conducted the interview was fucked up, or you just think the way they used it against you was I, fucked up? I mean, I just woke up to a text one day from my lawyer, like, hey, get that interview off YouTube. The uh, district attorney just got a hose to it. They used it against it to you for this new charge you just got uh, booked on. Did they take it down? Hell yeah, he took it down in two minutes. But then he put it back up later? He never put it back up. It's not. I seen it the other day. No, that's another one. That's only part of it. No, I had one in Hollywood in the Uh, alley. And then I had another one in the backyard because I was getting to it with Takashi 6 ix 9 Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good times. I don't even know what to say. I ain't, <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with him, that man. Seems like that seems funny in retrospect that, that, that all these real gangsters in L.A. were, like, pissed off about him because just the way it all went down, it just – at the time, he seemed like an actual – Gang member who was just wilding out, and now it's like, oh, that shit just seems like such a joke. Nah, I you know? seen straight through it. You hear yeah. me? But I really wasn't beefing with Takashi. It's like I was just talking about dark hair rappers and shit acting like they shooters. I never said his name. You feel me? Right. He commented on my Instagram. I'm he like, did. yeah, I didn't know that. He commented on my Instagram, putting laughing emojis. So I'm like, what you laughing at? He like, I'm going to be in L.A. in three days. Mm-hmm. I'm like, he like, I got a show. I'm like, all right, come to L.A. if you want to. He really came to L.A., but he didn't do the show. We pulled up. You, you, know I mean? you pulled up, and that was the reason why the it's show didn't happen? It's footage on YouTube. Hell yes, it was on Worldstar. I pulled up, and he didn't perform for sure. Define pull up. Like you were with like 100 people outside the venue or something? Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 nah, but I ain't going to lie, man. That dude was crazy, but everybody been knew what he was. Like, he got rainbow hair. He's in New York, <laughs> right. and he talking all this shit, and y'all expect him to go do some time? Like, be serious, bro. Like, them Treyway niggas is dumb. That's why mm-hmm. what happened to them. They knew he was weird. You feel me? Right. You feel me? They shouldn't even have him in that situation. He wasn't built like that, but... That's him. I don't, I don't even give a fuck about but him. We can switch the uh, whole conversation. Do you think that there are... Does that make you lose faith in gangbanging when he doesn't get popped? I'm not going to say I lose <laughs> faith because he probably moves strategic. He posts videos after he leaves, so right. he's kind of smart to be 100 with everybody. Yeah. He started all that beef because he knew what he was doing. And guess what? He blew up off this shit, so I'm never going to uh, knock a nigga for getting money. But far as I'm not mad at him for what he did. I'm mad at Detroit for taking a man. They knew what was going on. But is that that different than a lot of people from L.A. 
kind of like embracing celebrities and allowing them to claim hoods and shit is that kind of like just as lame from your perspective the six nine thing just went bad more so yeah man a lot of these rappers whoever come to la and shit just banging shit <laughs> i feel niggas want money but it's pride you feel me you gotta worry about respect you feel me respect first you a man before anything so you just letting anybody <laughs> come over there just say this mm, i mean That's like crazy. it's crazy though because like the public's appetite for gang shit is even more than when you got locked up like the hip hop fans just love real shit and they, they get obsessed with these artists who are really like actually getting in crazy ass trouble, you know? Who real though? Like like what rappers do you think really real? <laughs> well, like when I look at somebody like Pooh Shiesty, who oh, seems yeah. like he's facing a pretty bad case right now. I mean, his music was dope, but also like everybody seemed to understand that he was like really out here doing some crazy ass shit since he got in two insane situations like while he was a huge rapper. Hey, is, Not to mention the shit that he was doing before he blew up. Is that the one song to Gucci? Uh, yeah. I heard it when I was in jail. I think I heard that little Dirk Black and Blood. That's the only thing I heard. But I, I mean, did that was something. a huge smash. He has a lot of other good for music real? and I'm everything too. But sure. they're saying he's gonna do at least five years probably. Damn, crazy. He gonna come on more. I fuck with young boy music. I feel like he'd be on this shit. That's another person they're saying is going to be doing at least five years. He out. Yeah, for but like pending <laughs> pending trial. Oh, true. <laughs> and they got him in Utah. It's pretty funny to imagine him in Utah. That's crazy. My lawyer got a uh, license in Utah. I seen that on his car. That's crazy. It's not a place that I would imagine being very like friendly to young boy or the kind of place that young boy would really want to be but i don't think he's like allowed to leave the house so I guess yeah they, right. they don't care about no music in nevada <laughs> once you leave your city even your city they don't care they're trying to hang people so mm. yeah there's a couple real rappers out here but it's 90 90 percent fake rappers for you sure trying to get out of long beach Oh, like like make it out of Long Beach? I mean, are you just like, do you want to stay there? Like, do you stay there? Or are you? No, no. No, nah, you're over that? Ever okay. since Snoop moved me out of there, I've been going. You know, I could pull up, though. Right. Pull up when I want to. But you don't want to be the most famous person in the neighborhood. No, nah, I want to be the most famous person in the whole wide world. Yeah, you want to be the most famous person in a nice neighborhood. No, you actually want to move to a neighborhood when you're not the most famous person. Yeah, no, nah, I don't live. <laughs> I don't live in the trenches. Yeah, that's not no good. More. That's good. How's that ice? Good, man. I ain't had no ice in years. <laughs> Jabba Loke, my man, I appreciate you giving us the interview. Uh, I, and I, I'm a believer. I think your music's hard. I think everybody ought to go turn you up on Spotify and Apple and all that. Yeah, I appreciate the love, man. For sure. Appreciate Shout you. my boy Adam, man. <laughs> Jabba Loke, no jumper. Coolest podcast in the world. Check us out on YouTube. Patreon, all that shit. Like, comment, and subscribe. He's showing his ass. Nojumper.com if you want to support. <laughs> Let's go. Hey, shout out my boy Swab, man. Shout out to Gang. Shout out to everybody. Shout out Snoop. Shout out to Crip. <laughs>